Welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be 22 things that I learned by 22. This video is going to be uploaded on my 22nd birthday, but right now we're about a week away. But I thought it would be cool to just compile a list of things that I learned by the time I was 22. I've seen kind of a lot of people doing this kind of video. And I think it's really cool. And I think it's a way to teach people. So I really hope that you learn something from this. And most of these things I learned over the past two years up until the last week. So hopefully you can take something away from this. The first thing on my list is that I learned how to be a better friend. I recently found well i don't want to say i found i recently was just blessed with great friends not many but just little gems and i they taught me through their friendship they taught me how to be a friend to them because that's not something that i really understood in my past i had a lot of friendships that weren't genuine that there was just a lot of negativity in them and i had to kind of guard myself through every friendship that i had i was more so protecting myself from being hurt or from being rejected in the friendship because that's what I experienced a lot of the time but recently I, I've been able to attract amazing friends that just have these amazing characteristics and love and personalities and ways of expressing themselves and it's taught me how to sacrifice and be a loving friend we all know that if you want a friend you have to be a friend and so that's what I've learned like sometimes it takes sacrifice and it takes that's I mean that's the biggest thing for me it just takes sacrifice um, when you you know for those that you really care about and that um, I think friendships are important they're amazing and it's just important to just have those one to two good friends that you can count on so I'm working on being a better friend and I'm grateful for the friends that I have that have taught me how to be a great friend the next thing on my list is the importance of listening to your body one thing that I kind of realized was that my body kind of started changing about a year ago. Just I wasn't stuck in that same routine that I had my my sleep routine, my eating routine. Things just seemed off. So I had to kind of tweak things and really listen to my energy levels and my diet, my appetite and how much I need to exercise and staying, staying hydrated. Just my body changes. And I think as we get older, your body changes, your hormones change. I think I've mentioned about like my struggles with acne. I know acne is something that most people think of having when you're a teenager, but young adults can also get it. And that's something that I've been struggling with. Ooh, they're cutting the grass. That's something I've been struggling with a lot over the past uh, six months is acne. And that is a response to you know stress levels and things in your body. So. I learned that your body does change even in your early 20s and it's okay you're gonna just have to adjust to a new routine and just listen to your body if there's a day where you just don't have the energy to do anything then just take that day to relax because that's your body telling you that you're overworked and overwhelmed there's nothing wrong with taking a day off the next thing I learned was I learned about wants versus needs I think over the past six months I've kind of been taking on this idea of minimalism and for me, it was more so just the aesthetic of minimalism when it comes to fashion. So right now I have on a white shirt with black pants. And um, I've always loved fashion, but I always found it difficult and confusing to figure out what to wear for certain events and different occasions. But when I decided to become minimalist in my wardrobe, I said, I'm only gonna have clothes that are white, black, neutral, and gray, and olive green. Just very plain, basic, and simple so that I'm not confused about what to wear um, and like how to match things because everything will match if you just have things of the same color. So that's how I kind of took on the idea of minimalism. But then I also took on the idea of minimalism in the sense where I didn't want too many things that were big and bulky. My TV now is, a, it's like a 24 inch TV. I don't, I kind of only have one of things that are important. So one pair of this is really random but one pair of rain boots you know one coat for the winter one jean jacket just not having so much of everything and um, I also worked on my spending a little bit better where you know I'm, when, I'm, when it comes to buying things I make sure that I'm not buying things that I want but I'm also buying things that, that I need and I never want to be in the position where I'm just neglecting my needs and just paying, just paying attention to my want so I think minimalism kind of helped with my fashion, like I said, and it also just helped with 
um, my overall mindset and remembering what's really important. I learned how to do a cut crease. This is a makeup look, makeup eyeshadow look, doing a cut crease. I learned how to do this actually in high school and I remember when I learned how to do it, I was excited. I was ecstatic because the cut crease look was trending all over Instagram. And I don't think people understand that, I don't think people understood that what you're looking at is a cut crease because it just looks, your makeup and eyeshadow looks good, but it's a technique called a cut crease that takes some time and practice to get um, based on your eye shape. It could be kind of difficult to master, but I learned how to do it. And I love doing cut creases. And I'm gonna be working on learning more makeup looks um as well because i've always loved doing makeup but i thought that i would include that in here as i learned how to do a cut crease i learned that i'm a good listener over the past two years i took on the habit of listening to a lot of speakers every day on youtube or podcast and i would just have it playing while i'm doing other things and i would just listen to it and listen to it for hours and hours and I realized I really love doing this. I love just listening and that's a great way for me to retain information. And I think for me, what I like about listening so much is I pay attention to the tone as the tone that people um, use when they speak, when they say certain things. And a lot of times when I'm with friends, somebody will say something and I will be the only one laughing at what they said because I'm laughing at not what they said, but how they said it, about the tone that they said it, about the way that their, their voice kind of tapered off towards the end or either like their voice kind of went higher stuff like that I'm just I really pick up on minuscule things when it comes to audio so I learned that I really like listening I learned that there's no love like the love you receive from your family I recently kind of just experienced really bad a really rough time I guess I'll say it's a rough time you know just battling different things in life bad thoughts and things and I I realized when I became around my family like wow this is a comfortable place you know I may not talk to everyone in my family every single day but it's family they're not gonna judge you they're not gonna question you they're, they're really literally just there to love you and that's what I love about family I, I don't think I'm really a, you know a family person but I do I did learn the value of family and just having family that you can call whenever something's wrong to not judge you and to they know you the best and so there, there are a lot of times the best people to talk to because they know you so well so I learned the value of family I learned how to style my natural hair this is something again recent it's on my blog channel I did my friend did a chop big chop on my hair where she cut off all my dead ends and then I later, I later went on to this natural hair journey of how to do a wash and go, how to do a bantu nut out, which I, which is today's hairstyle. I before then I was literally wearing my hair in either a bun, a top bun, a slip back bun, or two braids because that's all I knew how to do, which is the same little hairstyles. I didn't understand that I could actually wear my hair in its natural curl pattern. I always thought that I didn't have a curl pattern. Um, but I do and you probably do too. It's just important to learn how to manage your own hair Take care of your hair it doesn't matter what hair type you have But you don't want to always have to depend on a hairstylist to do your hair um, So learn how to do your own hair and I'm, that's what I learned I learned the importance of that and I'm so glad I learned how to do my own hair It was, it was a great journey and I just am looking forward to teaching other people about how to do their hair as well I learned how to control my attitude I <laughs> don't think i really had much of an attitude problem but i think I, I kind of had this thing where i kind of was emotional a lot was overly emotional when it came to my facial expressions and my tone of voice and you know my eye rolls and people kind of took it at me asked me having an attitude but i guess i learned how to tone all of that down um you know having a very stoic face you know sometimes in conversations so that people aren't getting offended i learn to if something is bothering me or if i'm in a kind of like a and rushed or anxious situation to so just stay calm stay cool calm and collected stay controlled have a very stoic face don't you know don't always wear your expressions on your face don't let everyone know what it is you're thinking or feeling try to just practice 
looking calm, being calm, at peace. That's what I that's what I learned. I learned that some people come into your life just for a season and not forever. And I actually should say most people come into your life just for a season. And I mean that's pretty self-explanatory. And I think it's something I mentioned before, but when you are constantly growing and you know trying to improve yourself everybody that's with you can at that moment cannot stay with you to everywhere that you're going to be elevating to so and it doesn't mean that you have any beef with that person or heartfulness for that person it's okay to um not talk to someone all the time that you're used to but still be on good terms with them and I, that's something i realized after finishing college you know the people that were with me freshman year aren't with me now and um I, you know, but that doesn't mean that I hate them or that I don't like them or that I don't want to talk to them or that I should be rude to them. No, it's still love and it's okay. And it's just a part of life understanding that, look, everybody is not going to be for you all the time and just appreciate them when, it, when they are there and understand that they, they're not going to be with you forever and ever and ever, just only for that point in time. But it doesn't mean that you can't still have love towards them. I learned how to interview well i should just say i learned how to interview but well because over the past three months i had so many interviews being that i was about to graduate from college had to interview for graduate school and all the programs that i applied to um actually not all of them but some of a lot of them Actually, one of them mentioned on the on the application that you have to do an interview, but the rest didn't, but they still wanted an interview. And that makes sense for graduate school. You know, a lot of times it's smaller programs. They just want to get to know you. But um, I had to interview for grad school, like I said, um, jobs. And then in some of my classes, we had mock interviews. So I learned a lot about interviewing. And the biggest thing that I think people need to understand for interviews is it's really about knowing yourself obviously they want it they are they're interviewing you so they want to know about you so if you don't really know yourself you really are not going to be able to have a good interview so take time every now and then to say okay what are my strengths and weaknesses what are um what does customer service mean to me and you know what am i looking forward to in this program or in this job that i'm applying to go back and or and even think about you know what is what is an experience where i had to be a leader um, so think about all your experiences. Like if you're in college now, think about times where you had to be a leader in any of your organizations or jobs and just focus on your strengths and weaknesses and just take time every now and then to um, figure out you so that when it comes time for the interview, you're not confused and rushing and you know trying to prep for the interview a couple of days before, but you already have like a running idea of who you are, your strengths and weaknesses and um what else like your your um skills and you know just you know you pretty well you know how you manage things in a workplace make sure you know you boo i learned how to cook i put i learned how to cook slash bake um over the quarantine i i learned how to cook i just felt kind of bored and said i want to let's let's cook this you know if i'm scrolling on pinterest or something i see something cool that i want to cook let's cook it and i just i love doing it, it so fun and I, I'm not the type of person that really likes eating out much because I kind of I don't like eating out because I don't know what's actually in the food I know that sounds kind of weird but I like to cook my own food so I know how I'm seasoning it I know how long I'm cooking it I know how it's gonna taste I love that and I also learned how to bake so I've always loved baking chocolate chip cookies but I learned how to do it from scratch just following a recipe I did cookies brownies you know I don't know how to do a cake yet but that's that's coming next so i just learned how to cook and bake and it's it's great there's been times where i've cooked something and i i say ew i hate this but my family likes it there's been times where you know i cook something I'm like wow this turned out really good i can't wait to make this again so i learned how to cook and bake and i think it's a really good skill especially for us females to have and even in, even if it's not you know so that you cook for other people but just you need to know how to cook. You got to know how to take care of yourself. I learned how to skate backwards. Skate backwards. So I, um, for about three years, like three years ago, I started going to the skating rink back at home. 
in the summer times and now recently I learned how to skate backwards which is a really big accomplishment because people always ask me when they hear that I like to skate they say oh can you skate backwards yes I can now I'm gonna cue the video I'm gonna show you guys how I look when I skate backwards it's it's, it's difficult I don't have it comfortable yet but I can do it so that that's a pretty good accomplishment I, I'm getting I'm gonna get real smooth with it one day but I learned how to do it I learned to trust my intuition I think well I know that one of the greatest gifts that, that we have as females is our intuition and it's something that it's, it's never gonna stir you wrong okay it's that gut feeling that something it's that gut feeling that you have about something or someone or situation trust it and sometimes if we find ourselves in manipulative relationships people will have us second guessing and questioning our intuition don't do that trust your intuition and even not even in relationships but just in life if you you feel a certain way about something but then you try to talk yourself out of it or second guess yourself no i always trust my intuition you know i always kind of whenever i sense that something's wrong with someone or something i'm right so it, and it's just because as females we just have a different way of processing things and paying attention to things so don't second guess your intuition and understand that your intuition is a great gift and you should be grateful for it understand that it can never do you wrong okay i have two more i think i learned that wait i just left my mind i learned okay i don't really know how to phrase this but you know <laughs> here i go but um in today's society, a lot of things that are trending, a lot of the things that people talk about the most are things that are negative and they're not things that are helping make the world better or helping spread a positive message. And so recently, since I changed my brand and what I want to be known for and talk about on my platforms, since what I want to talk about is positivity and teaching people things to help them in life. I understand that I learned let me say that that is not something that's for everybody and it's not something that's going to trend it's not something that's it's not something that you just everybody is just going to be flocking towards it because this is something that you have to put your ego aside in order to be the type of person that wants this kind of content so I learned that I'm on my own journey I learned to just not compare myself to the journeys of others and to trust my journey and my process and understand that whoever my message is meant for, they will get it. They will hear it. I truly believe that because I've seen it even in other people's lives, that their message, they were called to, to me because every day I'm searching for them online and I'm, you know, I'm yearning for their message. So I learned that I may not finish first. I may finish last. Oh, my camera just went out. The other thing I learned was to there's a there's it's important to find a balance between being sensitive and being insensitive because you don't want to be too sensitive because then everything that everybody says will kind of get to you. You don't want to be that type of person. But then you don't want to be too insensitive because then everything everybody says, you'll never listen to it and you could always learn something from somebody else. So there, it, it takes time and practice from receiving criticism and just listening to other people to figure out how sensitive do you really want to be. Now, somebody like me who is kind of sensitive by nature has to work on kind of blocking things out sometimes and kind of taking things with a grain of salt when necessary. So that's something that I had to work on personally, which is not being so sensitive, but still, I want to say that there is still a necessity for being, for being sensitive a little bit, because that's, that's the point of being humans. You know, we connect, we're sensitive, we love, and that's, you know, you have to be a little sensitive, but you don't want to be too sensitive. So I learned that I had to find that middle ground. And the last thing that I learned was to put myself first, okay, self-love. Um, I think everybody could benefit from from learning about this, but just self love, putting yourself first. And if you're someone that struggles with being a people pleaser, or you don't want to, you know, you you're a conflict avoider, 
you don't like tension you just want to make everybody else happy to avoid conflict it's hard for you to put yourself first because if somebody asks you for something and you deep in your heart in your mind you don't want to do it it's not for you at that time but you you say fine you, you say I, i'm gonna push myself to the side and i'm gonna put other people first and you make them happy people will use you and walk all over you and abuse you because they know that about you so put yourself first and i mean like i said in my first one i talked i said sacrifice so again it's all about finding that middle ground you want to be able to sacrifice and understand it's going to take sacrifice for you to love other people and for other people to love you and for you to be selfless but don't let it get to a point where you are being used and taken advantage of because of you being a people pleaser so put yourself first take care of your mind your body your spirit this is your life believe in what you believe don't listen to what other people are telling you like i said you can but don't internalize it be you take what you need from other people as far as information and what they say but form your own thoughts form your own ideas and form your own reality and live your own life that's the last thing i learned i think that was the best thing i could have learned hold on i need i need a drink i need water <laughs> it's water by the way i'm parched after all that talking but those are things i learned by by the age of 22 and it's amazing it's amazing that i've come so far to be still so young 22 is young young it's a little young and i was thinking like 22 a double will be 44 which is not that old either but just imagine like the wisdom i would have gained by then like oh my gosh so i hope you enjoyed this video thank you guys for watching and have an amazing day